pour moi le meilleur bio informaticien du monde, euh, et avec qui nous avons fait plusieurs travaux, c'est la, la deuxième fois qu'il vient ici. Euh, euh, Philippe Colson est resté un an chez lui pour faire la génomique des, des, euh, des virus géants, et on a encore beaucoup de travaux en commun. Il a une, une productivité qui est impressionnante, un nombre de citations qui est hallucinant, et une, une, une facilité à comprendre, à intégrer les données, à les écrire, qui est unique au monde. C'est un grand privilège d'avoir Eugène Pounine ici, et, et euh, à chaque fois sur des sujets qui sont euh, très fascinants. Et on a des discussions très euh, intéressantes sur le, les, la, notre vision de l'évolution, et je suis content sur un certain nombre de points, je l'ai convaincu de mon point de vue, pas sur les autres, mais je ne désespère pas d'arriver à le convaincre sur d'autres points sur lesquels nous ne sommes pas encore entièrement d'accord. Mais c'est un, un grand plaisir et je, je voudrais organiser de manière assez régulière dans le cadre de l'IHU que tous les ans, travailler un peu avec nous sur les différents sujets et, et euh, peut-être organiser the next time a little longer, maybe it's a few days here to at the time to work on the thing and do that every year if we can. This, this would be our uh, real uh, honor to get you there for a few days every year. So, thank you. That's good. <coughs> Bonjour. Thank you for the introduction oh, and for the invitation to speak here. Of course, in your introduction, especially if you spoke a little faster, you could say lots of bad things about me. And I would not have understood quite a few of them, but what I understand was appreciate that very much. Mm, so, mm, today, um, as, as Didier actually mentioned in his introduction, we do a lot of mm, computational studies in phylogenomics, evolutionary genomics, modeling of different evolutionary processes, and they could have given you um, given here a very general um, talk, but I decided um, to concentrate on a particular subject. Uh, which I find to be, um, uh, over the last few years, extremely interesting and exciting, and I hope to explain why. Um, and then, at the end, we'll finish with some generalizations that hopefully will be outrageous enough. Perhaps even to be All right. Uh, but I'll start, uh, start with a little history here, uh, um, which, which was an interesting history. For my colleagues and myself, it started in um, 2002 uh, when we were actually doing a, um, a systematic analysis of the conservation and evolution of um, gene neighborhoods in uh, bacterial and archaeal um, uh, genomes. You know, of course, that um, in uh, um, our bacteria uh, and archaea genes are often organized in operons. <coughs> and operons show um, sort of overlapping patterns of gene conservation. They change, they add genes, they lose genes, but to some extent are concerned. So we are interested in using comparative genomics to identify large, partially conserved um, clusters of um, uh, um, uh, genes. And we develop certain algorithms, certain methodology <coughs> um, uh, um, uh, to do that and publish the paper, uh, but uh, you know, the reason I'm explaining this is what this is what just stared at us from the uh, results of this uh, um, of that study, <coughs> of, um, of that systematic comparative genomic study. This is the second largest partially conserved gene neighborhood uh, you know, that we identified in uh, bacterial and archaeal genomes, understandably after the ribosomal superoperon. And we did a systematic analysis of the protein sequences encoded in that gene neighborhood. It came up with this prediction that this is probably was a novel um, DNA repair system uh, found uh, um, most frequently in thermophilic organisms. As I said, we, identified, uh, we did a very comprehensive analysis of the protein sequences and domains in these proteins, which was not easy or because many of these proteins are highly diverged, as we shall mm, discuss more. I will show you uh, a later update or subsequent update of that analysis, and we identify <coughs> uh, about 
10 genes that are found in all of the genomes that have this gene. Neighborhood and um, a number of genes that are found in, in different subsets um, and are uh, predicted, or uh, none of them have actually been uh, biochemically characterized, but we predicted, or uh, at that time, uh, we uh, predicted a variety of activities such as helicases, nucleases, and polymerases that seem to be um, uh, very uh, compatible uh, with the normal um, repair system. And we also uh, uh, identified uh, for the first time uh, this uh, group of proteins for which we designed, devised the acronym RAP, Repair Associated Mysterious Proteins, a highly diverse protein superfamily which will be important in the day. Simultaneous and unbeknownst to us, uh, a group in the Netherlands identified, studied DNA repeats in bacterial and archaeal genes. Unfortunately, as I see it now, at that time we did not pay any attention to these mm, uh, to short mm, uh, repeats in our uh, mm, uh, bacterial and archaeal genomes. That was a bad mistake. We really should have. Uh, mm, so mm, what these researchers identified in many genomes, it, it, it was not really the discovery of, mm, of this class of repeats, but a, a better characterization. Of they identify so-called clusters regularly interspaced short or polydromic mm, uh, repeats mm, uh, with the nice acronym CRISPR. Mm, this is what we will uh, talk about during all this mm, uh, seminar. Mm -hmm. uh, so that already gives you an idea of what they are. Um, uh, they are uh, tender uh, mm, uh, direct repeats with some polydromic structure within them. Um, interrupted by a unique mm, uh, space. And this group also identified several genes that are um, typically located next to these repeats in archaeal and bacterial genomes. Mm, and at some point, we realized that these CAS genes um, uh, that um, uh, this group has identified are actually a subset of our so-called repair system. Mm. So the cast genes, simply put, are our repair system. So mm, uh, this, mm, and this gave us a completely different uh, perspective on this whole mm, uh, mm, situation. I'm just showing you, uh, we'll go into the, the certain details of these um, mm, uh, genomic arrangements. But right now, I just want to impress you with that of um, diversity or of the mutual localization of these arrays of cast genes, crispr associated genes, and the repeat uh, cassettes themselves. These repeat cassettes can be of pretty much any size. They come from in um, sizes from just a couple of repeats, like here, or to hundreds and hundreds that are not uh, shown um, here to scale. And then came the moment of uh, so <coughs> for, um, for a little while there was complete confusion about um, what could be the contribution of these um, repeats to DNA repair, if A and what more generally would be uh, the functional roles of, um, of these um, of these gene networks. Um, and then came the moment of truth. Uh, the moment of truth came uh, um, when this group in Spain in other county, mm. and then, uh, uh, studied in detail the sequences of the unique spaces located within these CRISPR cassettes separating the uh, repeats and found that some of these sequences, not all of them, mm, but a fraction of these sequences, precisely matched mm, uh, sequences of, mm, from uh, bacteria phages and conjugated of mm, the plasmids. And in a separate independent study, it has been shown that these laws are transcribed and apparently produce short RNAs. So the possibility presented itself um, that this was actually, um, that this system actually produced regulatory RNA 
that would specifically recognize targets through homologous RNA space sequence, similarly to the system of eukaryotic RNA interference. Based on these observations and on our own analysis of the protein domains, we put out five years ago a detailed uh, hypothesis paper. We only could publish this, of course. It was, uh, as, I, as I will show in a moment, it, it was a bold and detailed hypothesis. We only could publish it in this journal, in a very long paper. I'm fairly sure that no other decent journals would accept it. And I'm very happy that we did it in that uh, manner. Basically, uh, the key word here in the title of this paper is immune. Um, so we proposed that this, this was not only a system based on RNA interference, but that was a true immune system against um, viruses and more generally against alien DNA elements um, in archaea and bacteria. Basically, basically um, you know, that was the idea of that this system functions by integrating short fragments of um, important phageoplasmic <coughs> genes into the CRISPR cassettes. And when expressed, these fragments, as we proposed at the time, this turned out not to be quite precise, or they would silence the target gene and make the organism immune to the respective edge. And we more or less identified all the active, predicted all the active protein activities um, that would be involved in these processes. It's interesting and important um, uh, that some of these proteins are um, functional analogs of eukaryotic proteins that are involved in RNA interference, but none of them are actually homologs of, um, of, um, protein, of, of, of the eukaryotic RNA I of, um, uh, protein. So apparently, um, uh, the system evoked an analogous modus operandi of bioconvergence. And then very soon, I at least believe that that hypothesis really triggered a lot of um, investigation, and the key validation um, came from this uh, quite soon uh, in this paper published by a group of researchers from the Denise College. Of uh, a corporation who uh, worked on this very sloptic uh, bacteria, in particular Streptococcus, and they show that CRISPR cassettes with um, uh, associated Cas genes provided resistance against phages. And more importantly, that resistance specificity was determined by spacer phage sequence similarity, or more precisely, by spacer phage sequence identity. Because not only did they show that engineering, um, also this is the <coughs> sensitivity of wild type to a particular bacteria, or streptococcus wild type to a particular bacterial phage, is completely sensitive. Mm, and this is what uh, happens when you engineer a short sequence homologous mm, or, or to or, um, a fragment of um, a bacteria. Uh, uh, phage gene, or rather identical to a short sequence of a bacterial phage gene, and, of course, and you have to engineer it in a very specific place between CRISPR repeats, and then you provide a high level of uh, resistance. In this particular case, indeed, a single snake, a single substitution reverted um, to uh, sensitivity, and they showed you by the study that one of the cas genes um, was uh, important um, for the resistance. So that was that was the key uh, confirm validation, confirmation of the uh, hypothesis, and, and it has been shown in the same work and soon by others that in cells from phage resistant mutants uh, were actually identical to um, uh, regions that were scattered all the bacteriophage genomes. Any, pretty much anywhere mm, uh, in bacteriophage genomes. And now we fast forward. That was the story of you know, serendipitous discovery that I really wanted to tell. And now we jump to mm, the current mm, uh, situation. Um, mm, 